again. So this is Mike Tracy. Um, yeah, just share whatever you want. You got 10 to 12 minutes, okay? Okay, I got this too. Okay. Good morning. Actually, I feel quite blessed to be able to be here and, and talk to you uh, because our father has done so much of my life in the last six months. Uh, oops, somebody dropped a dollar. I find it's important because it gives me a chance to tell you what's been going on in my life and at the same time to glorify God because of what he has been doing for me. I've been a Christian since I was about eight years old. That was a little while ago. But I don't think that I truly learned what God's love was until about six months ago. I grew up in a, a Christian family with wonderful parents. And I'm, and I'm not just saying that because my mom's sitting in the congregation, but <laughs> they truly gave me a good basis to start life on. Uh, but I had a little bit of a roving soul, and I felt the Lord was pushing me towards military service, so I joined the Canadian Armed Forces when I was 20. Uh, it's not really an environment that is conducive to Christianity, <laughs> but it taught me a lot. Uh, in the years that I was growing up and throughout my career, uh, I believed in God, but I wasn't a very good Christian. I didn't really talk to him. Like most people, I only talked to him when I needed help or when I was afraid or something was going on in my life. And when I, 2003, actually in the year 2000, I went to Africa on a six-month uh, peacekeeping tour, which I would say was quite, uh, quite traumatic because it showed me a lot of things that I'd never seen before, things that just rocked me right to the bottom of my soul. Uh, the only thing I could, if I was asked to uh, describe that, that test, I'll call, I would call it, I would uh, quote a Bible quotation, all men have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Because, man, oh man, some of the things I saw there is just, it's unbelievable what people can do to others. And they go through their life. After I came back, I, uh, I, would say I wasn't very happy with who I was because of, I guess, it had, it, the, the uh, experience had changed me. And as I was going on in my life, I felt I had no direction, really. My wife asked me what my goal was future on, later on in life. I couldn't have told her. I had no idea. And as time went on, I had, oh, I was just surviving, if you want to come down to just a term. In 2011, my mom moved down with us, which was a great day. Uh, because it gave me someone to talk to about the Heavenly Father and someone who is very, has very, very strong faith in the Lord. Uh, in 2011, uh, actually about five months after uh, mom, mom came to live with us, uh, we wanted to take her on a cruise because I knew that she had always wanted to, to go on a cruise and never been able to go. So we went, and it was really great. Um, however, on the first night, I think the Lord was fed up with me just paying lip service to him for almost 50 years, and uh, he took away the sight in my right eye the first night. And I'll say that was quite, uh, got my attention. Uh, there was no pain, but it was, I just couldn't see. In 30 seconds, it was like somebody pulled a blind over my right eye. And uh, so I, I didn't want to ruin Mom's first night on the, on the cruise, so I didn't say anything until the next day. Uh, my wife was a little upset with me. I hadn't told her right away, but that's okay. Uh, when I came home, uh, of course, I went to the doctor, I went to the hospital, 
and I had my eye repaired, my retina had uh, detached. And uh, apparently it, it really detached. So when I, the, the surgery went very, very well, uh, very, very blessed there. I was able to, well, yeah, it went very well, <laughs> let's put it that way. Uh, as I was home recovering, um, I had to keep looking at the floor all the time because they put a gas bubble in your eye and it, your head down, it presses up against the retina to keep it up against the eye. All right, so uh, I learned every square inch of my floor at home. I counted 256 paint spots on the floor from when I painted the ceiling the year before that I had missed cleaning up. But at the same time, and I'm going to go back just a little bit. When Mom came to live with us, I wanted her to have fellowship with other people her own age and, and our age, is, you know, everybody's age. So I started looking for a church out towards Belle where we live. There wasn't really anything out there, uh, at least in English. And so I went on the internet, and the first church that popped up was Destiny. So I kind of put that in the back of my mind. And as we were going along, and I was saying, oh, you know, I really should take mom to church. I just take her there, drop her off, or you know, whatever. You know, this is where my, where my head was. So when I was looking at the floor and having a lot of time to ponder my life, uh, I started praying because I started realizing what it could mean if that vision didn't come back. Uh, I wouldn't be able to work, at least not the job I'm doing now, because I couldn't get to work. Um, so it would have a pretty, you know, reality kind of sets in after all the, you know, the excitement and the panic and the anxiety of losing sight. And as I was sitting there, I started thinking, you know, I started praying quite a bit. Actually, a lot. <laughs> and, I finally, and finally, I said, you know, Lord, if you heal my sight, I will start going to church again. And so I, so I said, okay, I said it, because I strongly believe that what you say to the Lord, you better keep your promise, because, well, I just wouldn't want to be the person that he's angry with. And uh, so anyway, so I made the promise, and I went back to the doctor, and my eyesight was back again in my right eye. So it was like, okay, here I am. Do I keep going the way I've been going, or do I keep my promise? Well, I kept my promise. And so I looked up Destiny again. Yeah, there it was. <laughs> and the amazing thing was is that every time I Googled Christian Church on the South Shore, it was only Destiny that came up. Can you believe that? So... Uh, so we came to Destiny that, uh, I don't want to say fateful Sunday morning, but that Sunday morning, and we walked down the aisle, and we met Pastor Dave. And us being new, I guess he said, oh, hello, you know, where are you from? I said, oh, we're from Bedei. You know, just saying this is just like a normal starting of a conversation. He starts jumping up and down. And I'm, no, okay. <laughs> what he told me, almost knocked me over. He said that the day before the Saturday that they'd been in Quebec City. And on the way home, they drove through Belle, and he said the Lord told him that someone from that town would be coming to church the following day. And so when he said that, you know, you want to say something, you kind of go, oh, okay. So we sat down. I must say that that started... Um, a chain of events in my life that have truly changed me. I can't say it any other way. Uh, all these things are to God's glory because as I've been reading the Bible, uh, you, you know, you read so much and 
even though I'd been a, a I'll use the term Christian for a long time, uh, I never really knew what the joy of the Lord was. You know, I knew he was there. I knew that he answered prayer. But my life, I just, I didn't, didn't really feel, I didn't feel any different. Uh, I do now. And listening to people in church talking and, you know, usually when you start, it's the same thing, I guess. I don't, maybe this isn't a good <laughs> way of saying it, but what, you know, New Year's, when people say, oh, I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to this or that, you're really pumped up and you're ready to go. But after three, four weeks, it's kind of, eh, you know, I don't really, really feel it. But through reading the Bible, coming to church, talking to other Christians, fellowship, fellowship is something I never had in the military. And I thought at the time, no, I'm good. I know who God is. I know within myself what I need. And he's there if I, you know, if, if I need something. And this is where I found out that I was wrong. Because talking to the other men and the women here, uh, listening to the sermons, it's been great. And if there's any of you out there who are new Christians or are thinking of becoming a Christian, and you're, you're talking to other people here, and they say, oh, I feel this, I feel that. And if you don't feel it, uh, sometimes I didn't feel what they were saying to me. I said, well, what am I missing? You know, I better read the Bible more and find out what, maybe I'm missing something here. And what I'd like to say to you is just wait for the Lord. Because I found that all the questions I had as I was going uh, through the last six months, uh, he answered all of them. He has a plan for us, and don't worry if you're not feeling what other people are feeling. It's between you and God is what it is. And he will show you what he wants you to know and what he wants you to see because it's personalized to you. All right? The second thing is uh, the love of God is everlasting it's so deep that yes oh okay good I'm almost done his love is so deep I went through well 30 years of just you know existing with God being a lukewarm Christian and he was always there for me I might not have listened to him a lot or talked to him, but he was always there with me the whole time. And I think he get, finally got fed up with me and said, okay, pal, you know, two by four between the eyes, took. <laughs> and he has really woken me up, really has. And the bottom line was he never left me as my father's soul. And I now, my, my future, I feel it's, it's open. I have great expectations for the future. I really do. And for the young people, that, the young ladies that are going away to France, you're going to love it. I lived beside France for seven years, so great place. Haiti's not so nice. Yeah. <laughs> I know a lot about Haiti. Uh, my job was I used to have to... No. No, I'm not going to scare him. I'm just, what I want to say to you is that stand on the grace and the power of God. Because he's going to back you up. He's going to back you up. He's going to be your refuge. All right? Enough said. Good? Okay, thank you. Bless you, Mike.